If you're looking to boost your Mutt team or make some money by selling coins, check out MobileMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? ClickWood here back again, bringing you guys another Madden video. And guys, today what I want to talk about is competitive Madden, but I want to talk about it on a different level. We've talked a little bit earlier this week about uh, some various different things, such as the, the Madden Championship and, uh, you know, different things like that. But I want to actually talk about what you're seeing on your screen here. Now, this is actually Madden 25 clips taken from London RTR. Yeah, I have his permission to use them, so don't worry. Uh, but guys, what the reason that I want to talk about team play is because I actually believe that team play is the move in the long run for Madden competitive. So if you guys don't know, uh, team play has actually been out of the game the past two seasons. So Madden 15, Madden 16, it was not included. It has been in the game in the past though, obviously, as you're watching on your screen. And I will tell you guys, I personally believe that team-based esports are really the way to go. Uh, if you look at it, every big esport right now, CSGO, League of Legends, Dota, uh, Smite, Call of Duty, Halo, all of them are multiplayer team-based games. And what's funny is that a lot of these games, like Madden, could also be played one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I understand, obviously, Madden is traditionally a one-on-one -on -one game, but if you actually think about it, team play does bring a ton of aspects to it that, uh, you know, the other game modes, you know, Madden Ultimate Team, Draft Champions, standard head-to-head, -head, things like that just do not bring to you. So I want to talk about kind of why I believe that team play is the right thing. And it, so uh, another thing too, first of all, I want to say xRyan915 also made a video talking about this. Uh, Ryan and I kind of are in, are in complete agreement on this that the, uh, the team play is the way to go. So what I'm actually suggesting is a, a game mode that I believe will kind of do more than one thing. First of all, I think that it's going to satisfy the players because it's going to be a lot of fun. But secondly, I think it's going to satisfy EA themselves. And, and quite frankly, that's an important aspect at this point because EA is putting a million dollars on the line, it sounds like, between the tournaments that they're doing over the next year. So in Madden 17, we're going to see a million dollars total in prize pool, if not more than that. It could actually end up being more than that. So it's extremely important that we do things that they're going to like because uh, we want them to, to participate in the competitive scene. And so what I'm actually recommending that we do is play a game mode that they created this past year in Madden 16, and that's Draft Champions. So Draft Champions is, I think, ideal for competitive Madden in multiple different ways. You know, first of all, I think that it does a great job of just balancing the teams. Uh, you don't have somebody with a super overpowered team and the opponent not having a super overpowered team. It doesn't require that you play ultimate team but yet it still actually highlights the qualities of Ultimate Team and some of the cards, which, you know, at the end of the day is EA's moneymaker on this game. So it's extremely important, I think, that we do something that, that advertises that along with, uh, you know, still keeps things competitive. So what my suggestion is here is that we do team play draft champions, and I'm going to kind of explain how this would work. So uh, first of all, the big thing, obviously, is the draft. Now, the draft, I think, is going to be something that it's extremely exciting to watch. And, and this is something that is actually happening in other esports as well. So other esports don't necessarily have, you know, like a Madden draft champions type draft, but they have a lot of different really cool things in them. Um, if you look at like the, the Call of Duty specialist drafts and the ban and protect system in their, in their competitive game, uh, I think that's exciting to watch and I think draft champions still would blow it out of the water in terms of excitement because there's so many different cool things that go into it. And so the way that I'm actually suggesting that we do this is 3v3. So three players on one team, three players on the other team, that's your team. And what would end up happening then is that the team at the beginning of the draft, and every time that you play a competitive game, it would be a new draft, by the way. Uh, and the team would actually vote on the coach and playbook. So all three players would have a vote 
and I'm assuming obviously that you're going to be in some sort of a Skype conversation or, or, you know, obviously you could be in person as well. And you're going to come together. You're going to pick the right thing for you uh, and your players, the thing that you're comfortable with. And basically from that point, you're then going to go into the draft and the draft is going to be round by round, 15 total rounds. And each player will then have an opportunity to pick five different players for their team. And I think by doing this, what you're actually doing is adding an additional little bit of strategy because you're going to have internal conversations between your teammates on what to pick each round. And it's going to add some interesting dynamics because a team might have to end up making a tough decision of getting a great offensive player, or they also could have the opportunity to get a great player for user controlling on defense because all three players are going to be playing both offense and defense. So it adds that interesting dynamic because you don't only have to get, you know, let's say if you typically user a middle linebacker like I do, you don't only have to get one great user on defense. You're going to have to get at least three great users for people on defense so i think that'll make things a lot of fun and you know i might decide look i know that you need a really good player ryan but uh, for defense but i really think we've got to get this golden ticket mike evans on our team you know so that might screw that en might end up screwing over ryan but at the end of the day, it could be the right decision for our team. And obviously, again, you're going to be in a, a Skype chat or in person. So you're going to be conversing and, you know, hopefully you're going to come to an agreement as a team. But at the end of the day, it comes down to whoever's clicking that button. That's the person who's going to be making the decision. So I think it's going to bring that interesting aspect of the draft to the eSport. And honestly, a good draft versus a, pro, uh, a poor draft could end up being the difference between a win and a loss between these really good pro teams. So in addition to just the, the competitive aspect of things and the fact that I think that you're going to get a heck of a lot more, uh, you know, great things coming out of it, great excitement coming out of it. There's some advantages of just team based esports as well. So first of all, three users on defense, I think, is going to allow for less AI exploitation by the offense because it forces the player to make better reads and have better stick work. You're not just going to be able to know for a fact that, you know, a safety uh, like currently in the game, the, the post and the hook, those two route combinations can cause glitches on the defense, for example, from the safety position and on your offense, you know that if you're, the opposing person isn't using that safety that you're targeting, that that post post route is going to be there pretty much every single time. So what, what I'm recommending, of course, with the 3v3 is you're adding two more additional users on defense. And that's going to add some interesting things because it'll end up actually allowing players to specialize on both sides of the ball. But especially on offense where you're most likely going to have one specific quarterback, one specific receiver, and one specific running back. Although, of course, on passing plays, you have to assume that the guy is going to move from running back to a receiver position. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of really cool things that you can end up doing with this system, I think, the 3v3. And it's going to make things extremely exciting to watch. And you're going to end up having conversations about who's the best quarterback and who's the best running back and who's the best receiver, who's the best safety middle linebacker who is the best defensive lineman user in the game and I know a lot of people cringe when I say that but if you consider that you know you'd be able to actually have still somebody using the middle linebacker and the safety position or a corner position or something like that uh, I think using the defensive line becomes a viable option at that point so in addition to the fact that I think the actual gameplay would be better and more interesting due to less AI control, you're going to actually start to see, I think, competitive organizations step into Madden when you talk about 3v3. You're going to start to see, instead of it just being, you know, problem versus a Stiffmeister, you're going to start to see, you know, an actual team. And when you start to see actual competitive organizations get into the scene, and I don't know necessarily that we would see the big ones, the Cloud Nines, um, the Optic Gamings, the you know all these different other ones th throughout other organizations. I don't necessarily know that you're going to see that right away, but over time, I think that you're going to start to see these guys step into it. And when you get those competitive organizations, ones that have established you know management teams, and these guys know what they're doing, you're going to be able to start to see players 
really benefit from that, along with just the scene overall benefiting from it. These organizations typically play, pay for flights and hotels for their players, which is extremely important, of course. They can get the players sponsorships, which is massive, of course. I mean, we're talking about millions of dollars being on the line. There's going to be sponsorship money. It's available. I'm telling you right now. I mean, these sponsors, they know that especially if an eSport is going to be on ESPN2, like the Madden Championship was this past week, I mean, there's a ton of money in that. There really is. It's, it's tons of eyes on a potential product. Even if you're just wearing a t-shirt or a jersey or whatever that has an ad on it, I mean, money is involved there, man, and, and it's nice. It can definitely be money enough to, to help the organizations and give the players some money as well. And uh, once they start to able, be able to do that and have great ads and things like that from big sponsors, you're going to start to see that players are also making salaries. So it's not just going to be the, the final prize pools that end up being their only winnings throughout the year. So, you know, the only the top eight people in the world are making money. No, you're going to start to see that, you know, there's actually great, uh, you know, uh, salaries involved. And, and somebody might be making a couple thousand dollars a month just to, to be on a specific team. You know, uh, Team Envious, for example, might decide that they're going to make a Madden competitive team. And when you're on the Team Envious uh, competitive team, you might get, let's say, a $3,000 a month salary. I mean, that's the kind of thing that could really make it so that people can say, Madden is my actual job. And when you start to be able to do that, you're going to be able to spend more time on it, more resources, and you're going to be able to make your team better and more competitive and really have a chance at competing for that million dollar prize pool as well. So I love that aspect of things. In addition to that, in addition to competitive organizations getting involved, establishing rivalries, I think, is going to be a really cool thing. I mean, obviously, there are rivalries right now, and I think the most obvious one is Madden Daily versus the Problem Crew. And I don't know if Problem's Crew actually has a name to it, and I apologize if they do, and I just don't know it. And I, I'm not trying to say, obviously, that Madden Daily and that group dislike one another by any means. I think there's a lot of mutual respect there. But obviously, with so many of them being in the finals, I mean, you're talking about five of the, the final eight guys that were in that tournament are, uh, you know, people that run together on a regular basis. I think it would be pretty interesting to watch a 3v3 game with, you know, let's say Stiffmeister, Lights Out, and Fiasco versus Young Kiv, Serious Mo, and Problem. Can you imagine watching that 3v3 game? I think that would be extremely, extremely exciting. I think it would be amazing. And, uh, you know, despite the fact that there are rivalries, I really think that you're going to start to see a lot more of them when you've got the 3v3 games because you're going to start to see things like, uh, you know, Problem used to play with Serious Mo. But then they went their separate ways after falling short at Madden Championship. And then you start to see a little bit more kind of a story being told almost about that. And then when those guys get matched up in a game, we're a lot more interested in watching them play against each other. I, I don't think that, you know, saying Young Kiv runs with Problem and they practice together, I don't really think that that tells us enough. I don't think it makes things as interesting as, you know, these guys used to actually be teammates and now they're playing against each other. Get what I'm saying? So I, I think that'll be really cool. And then last but not least, kind of having 3v3 and competitive esports uh, along with the organization, I think it's going to, I, I really think it's going to add some professionalism with it being team oriented. I mean, if you look at other esports right now, there are top players who are not even currently signed to organizations. And a lot of that is because they don't conduct themselves in a professional manner, whether it's playing selfishly on the field or in the game. Uh, they really just don't pro play professionally. They don't bring that that aspect of uh, professionalism that these organizations are looking for. They might act out on social media, uh, but when you look at it, they can't do that in a competitive team-based environment. Uh, teams and especially organizations just won't stand for that. And I think it's going to really make things better in the long run. You're not going to have people, you know, uh, acting like assholes in on Twitter or in person to people. You're going to have actually people who understand that this is their profession and they need to conduct it like a business. And in the end, I think that that's really going to help competitive Madden grow. So again, guys, this is my recommendation. I, I think that a, a team-based draft champion system would be freaking amazing. I would love to see it. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this system? Do you think it would be cool to watch? 
I personally think this would be the best thing to watch. I think it would be exciting, and I think it would bring so many different aspects that we don't currently have in the competitive gaming of Madden. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will talk to you guys again soon.